Hey folks, thanks for joining today. Lunchtime live stream. I've got the door open the shack today, believe it or not. It's kind of cool but humid outside and the nice drizzle coming down kind of off and on today. We'll get started here in just a minute. You guys let me know how I sound because I've got my speakers turned off today that I usually turn off before this. I usually do a sound check and then I turn the speakers off anyway, but <laughs> my, uh, my FT8 transmitting is buzzing in the speakers, so I just turn the speakers off today. I should probably toroid my speakers, but I haven't done that yet. Maybe that will be a video. I'm not muted. Okay, good. Yeah. Y'all let me know how I sound in there. Very good. Good afternoon to everybody. Sounds good, loud and clear. Thanks, David. Appreciate everyone being here today. Uh, looks like we got a couple of channel members in the chat. Uh, Radio Waves North Texas. Radio Wayne, Texas, in the chat. W5WNR. Chester is in the chat. Uh, Tommy, KQ4AHR in the chat. So special shout out to the YouTube channel members. I saw Ed up there earlier too. And then uh, those of you who are patrons, thank you for being here as well. I don't, uh, there's not a way to recognize patrons in the YouTube chat because Patreon and YouTube are two different things. But I had a meeting with Patreon. It wasn't anything special about me, but uh, they reached out to several creators uh, about a month ago. And I did like a 30-minute interview with them. They just asked me a bunch of questions. And they kind of they kind of said some changes were coming with a, a better relationship between Patreon and YouTube. So, cool. Good deal. Hey, Don, how are you? Can only stay for about 15 minutes. Then I need to leave for the doctor's appointment. WJ3U. Thanks for being here, buddy. Hope you're doing well. All right. So, uh, as we talked about last Sunday, before we get started here, I want to... Bring this up real quick. The charity that I am promoting this year is the same one I promoted for the last two years, gospelsocks.com. Their mission is to gather brand new socks from people like you and I and take them, donate them to homeless shelters. It's a program done through my church, Fellowship of the Parks. Uh, they've got We've got several campuses around the North Texas area. It started in the North Fort Worth or Keller area, and... Here's what they're up to. They're, over 125,000 pairs of socks have been donated to shelter to homeless shelters around the North Texas area. So gospelsocks.com is their website. I'll share that in the description below. I got a text from them earlier today, about, about an hour ago, maybe, maybe 30, 30 minutes to an hour ago, something like that. He's like, hey, I guess you were talking about us again because we're starting to have socks show up with ham radio call signs on them. I'm like, yes, sir. <laughs> so... I was like, I sure am. So, yeah, go out there. And I've got a thing on my Amazon page that's right here. Now, you don't have to buy these. It doesn't have to be anything special. You can just go to regularamazon.com. You go to Walmart. You go to Target. and go anywhere you buy socks. Uh, if you do use my link, I am an affiliate, and I do earn commissions from qualifying items. So you can choose to use that or, or not, whichever. Doesn't matter. I'd rather you just buy socks and send them to these guys than use my link. But if you want to use my link, these are some that I've sent. I bought three. I bought three sets of these. I didn't buy these ones in the far right here. I bought one set of each of these and sent them, had them shipped to Gospel Socks on my Sunday live stream. And that's the one, they they actually, well, two of them arrived yesterday. The wool socks were delayed for a day or two. Uh, so I had those delivered, but that's that's where that is. And I like to support them. We did about, we together, the community donated about 900 pairs of socks two years ago. Last year, we didn't do so well because last year, sadly, we were supporting some uh, some GoFundMe's for people who had people who just needed it at the time more than more than this place did. So we're back at it now, and uh, I like to support them as much as I can. Uh, Uberbuck 
Uber Bucka Philly guys. Chuck, thank you for the $3 super chat. Appreciate you being out there today. Lon asked, does gospel socks assist missions or are they associated with just one? No, no, no. It's, they're, they're not associated with any mission that I'm aware of. They assist multiple homeless shelters. They are a mission of their own and they assist mo multiple homeless shelters in the North Texas area. I'm not sure how far reaching that is. Um, I can find out. I can find out and I can, I, I'll let you know. Hey, K7AGE in the house. What's up, Randy? How are you? Good to, good to see you today. It's, I guess it's morning where you are. It's five minutes after 12 where I'm at. So uh, good deal. So yeah, gospelsocks.com. You, you guys go check that out. I'll share the, I shared the link in the chat and I will put all these links in the show notes after the live stream's over as well. Also, Signal Stick is still running their I Can't Believe I Missed Black Friday sale. And they've been getting a lot of, <laughs> there's been a lot of really good, um, there's been a lot of people taking advantage of the sale. I'll put it that way. Here's this link here. Uh, they've got all of their stuff on sale. Half wave signal sticks, classic quarter wave signal sticks, all the adapters, super elastic signal sticks, factory second super elastic for 10 bucks. Hey, there you go. BNC magnetic mount for signal sticks. Sorry we couldn't discount this one maybe next year, but it's in there. So all of the proceeds that, uh, signal, that are made from selling signal stick antennas goes to benefit hamsteady.org which is where we tell people to go when they want to take their ham radio test. They, they, have a lot of, they have a lot of excellent study materials for free on, on that website as well. Excuse me. But um, they take all those proceeds to promote exam tools, which is their testing software, and uh, hamstudy.org. So. And, the, and the, the antennas are freaking fantastic. Okay, they're, they're just, they're really good, well-made antennas, so... So that's uh that's always a good thing. So that link is in the description below as well. So I told you guys I was going to be doing some FT8 on 10 meters. Lee says he ordered a couple of signal sticks. Those antennas are awesome. Ryan says yes they are. MTC extended their snow. Yeah, I read about MTC, MTC had a their internet provide or their website provider was down for a couple days. And they couldn't take orders for a couple days due to their website being down. So they extended their Let It Snow promotion for a couple days. There's that. So, okay. So FT8 on 10 meters is kind of open and down. This uh, Echo 8 Alpha, I'm sorry, Echo Alpha 8 Charlie Bravo Papa station is in the Canary Islands. He can't hear me, I guess. So I got a contact with Spain earlier. I got a contact with... Um, Several stations inside the United States, but I tried to call this this Canary Islands guy. He wasn't hearing me. Uh, Dominican Republic was in there earlier. He wasn't hearing me either. I'm just going to go back to calling CQ. Let me know if that buzzing is heard inside of the stream. Turn my computer speakers off because of it. Wanted to make sure that the buzzing's not heard inside of the stream. So just let me know if it is. And I don't know what I can do about it, but I want to know if it's there. Jose, thank you for the $5 super chat. Appreciate you being out there today, buddy. Just had Echo Alpha 8 Delta Sierra. That, I assume that's Canary Islands also. So Echo Alpha 8 came up and it said it was AF for Africa. And I'm like, Echo Alpha sounds like a Spanish prefix to me. So I had to look that up and it's Canary Islands. So no buzz on your transmission. Thanks, guys. Appreciate that. Okay, good. Clark, I'm a new technician. What's the best 10-meter ham radio to get started with for HF on a lower budget? TH9800. So something about the TH9800 that you may or may not be aware, you can only, it's, it's FM only. So if you have 10-meter repeaters in your area or you just want to try 10-meter repeaters in, the other, in other areas, which 10 meters, 10-meter 10 FM will work when the band is up. I've keyed repeaters from te from Texas, from driving in Texas. This is going to be an actual lunchtime live stream also. I haven't done this in a while, but I'm actually eating today. Oh. Um. Yeah. I have keyed repeaters in New York on FM on 10 meters when the band is up, so you can totally do that. But the TH9800 is FM only. So I would be more apt to get something like a... Um, um, 
FT891, Joe says, that's a good choice. If you're talking brand new, um, that's a good choice. It's a full HF mobile. But honestly, for what you're going to pay for a, for a 10 meter only mobile, I think MFJ makes a 10 meter only mobile. Radio Shack used to make one. And you can find those in the used market still. But for what you're going to pay for a new one, it's more cost effective to just get a full HF, full on HF mobile. So I would, uh, unless you're just, unless you just want to do 10 meter FM only, I would, I would not buy a TH9800 for the purposes of just using 10 meters. That's my opinion. Ooh, Whiskey Mike 7 Charlie, thank you for the contact. Let's see, who do we have here? Kilo Delta 8, alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. There you go, that's an unfortunate call sign. <laughs> well, I don't know, maybe it's not. Uh, ATF should be a convenience store, not a government agency. Here we go. Right there. Hey, Scott, thank you for the QSO, sir. MimTC has a President 2 for under $300. You know, those President radios are okay. Those are really supposed to be CBs. Those are really supposed to be used for 11 meters, even though they say 10 meter export radio, whatever that means. But I don't know. It depends on which one it is. If main trading companies sell it, then it's probably legit. I'm not sure which model you're talking about. But if they have a 10 meter, an actual 10 meter, not a CB, then yeah, that might be that might be a solid choice. If they're making an actual 10 meter radio and not something that's supposed to be an 11 meter radio that they're trying to sell under the radar, which main trading company wouldn't sell that anyway. So, yeah, that's that's. It's possible that that one is good. I'm not familiar with that model, though. Oh, let's see. Uh, Katie 8. Okay, not answering me. I'm going to go back to calling CQ. 10 meters seems to be kind of up and down. Uh, I was calling CQ earlier, and... Stations would come back to me, and I'd hear them once or twice, and they'd disappear. And I'm sure I'm probably disappearing for them, too. But then it shows on my screen that I've called them several times, and they're just not answering anymore. So, okay, KDA ATF, thank you for, got that. And Whiskey for Papa Oscar Tango, Whiskey for Pot. I'm going to assume that's a pot and pan. I'm, gonna, I'm just, yeah, we're just going to talk about that. Likely, that's that dude's initials. This is what people do these days. So, but you know, it still looks strange. <laughs> Lincoln Two, it is a ten twelve. I have one Lincoln Two. Okay, well, again, if Main Trading Company is selling, it's probably a legit radio. So maybe I'll ask Richard if, if he's got an open box and have him send it to me, and I'll do a video about it, and then I'll send it back to to back to him. Maybe I'll do that. That'd be fun. Bump. Nope, not that. Right there. FT8 is silent in Northeast Washington. Hmm. It's probably rocking down in uh, South America right now. Every time we go to Costa Rica, 10 meters is on fire down there. So something about equatorial trans... Uh, something about equatorial distances. Yeah, closer to equator down there than we are here. And Washington would be farther away from the equator, so maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know. Typical around noon to two thirty p.m. In my experience, after two thirty ish, it seems it seems it stabilizes some. You're talking about the up and down. Okay, okay, makes sense. Oh, there's a Charlie Uniform Three station. Okay, I got Whiskey Four POT. Thank you for the contact. Here's a Charlie Uniform Three Hotel Yankee. Let that finish. Boom. Got you in there, buddy. Charlie Uniform 3, Hotel Yankee. I should know where that is, but I don't. Uh, the Azores. That's an Azores call sign. Mike. Charlie Uniform 3, Hotel Yankee. Yep. Azores call sign. Got you in there. Showing as a negative 2 to me. That's a good signal. I've got a D Galaxy DS77, been tuned up in 10 meters, search channel 28, single sideband. <clears throat> you know, back in the day before I was more legit than I am now, <laughs> I had a Galaxy 88, 
and it would do sideband, and it, it worked. It actually worked pretty good on 10 meters. Oh, got the Azores in the logbook. Thank you in 73. There we go. All right. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Able to transmit. Nope, I can't do it that way. Yeah, those galaxies are... And since, you know, and technically speaking, since we, since part uh, 97 allows us to use experimental radios, those aren't really illegal to use on ham radios as long as you're licensed for the frequencies you're using them on. Now, you might want to put them on the meter and see how bad they're splattering, if at all. But, you know, cool. I missed the beginning. Can you tell me what you're doing? Is this digital over the computer? Okay. Over the computer is, is incorrect. Basically, what this, this is, in a nutshell, is a computer program running that's transmitting my radio into my antenna, and that transmission is being heard by other radios in other parts of wherever. Okay, so it's a computer program that's not using the internet, but using radio transmissions to communicate with other computers running the same radio program. It's the best way to describe it, really. So, where are we at over here? That's good. Okay. 73 for uh, KN4YZY. Thank you for the uh, QSO there. Transmit again. Yeah, 10 meters is fun. I went and looked up my videos from last year because I remember doing some 10 meters or some FT8 live streams last year, and I did one that was Christmas Day, Christmas morning. I did an FT... Uh, I don't remember if it's 10 meters or not. I did an FT8 live stream Christmas morning for about an hour, hour and a half. Merry Christmas to everybody. I will probably do that again this year. I will probably do that again this year. Christmas is on a Sunday this year. Um, they... We are... We typically go to my wife's family's uh, my my in-laws' house on Christmas Eve, so we'll be there Saturday night, and then we will go visit my mom and dad, which only live a couple miles that way, on Christmas Day, usually around ten or eleven in the morning. So I'll get up early, probably seven ish, and see what the band. Forty meters has been pretty hot lately. I've done a couple of live streams in the past when for, uh, getting up at like five thirty or six o'clock in the morning my time and getting on forty meter FT8, and I'm getting all kinds of stations from Asia, Japan, Indonesia sometimes Republic of Korea. I've seen some Chinese stations in there before. They're more, fewer and farther between, but thanks for being here, Don. Stay safe, buddy. So yeah, I might do a, probably do another Christmas Day live stream that morning. And maybe next week, I'll get up early and do an early morning FT8 on 40 meters live stream for Asia assuming that it's still, I'll, I'll have to look at it Monday and Tuesday and make sure it's still open and do that next Wednesday. Instead of doing the lunchtime, we'll do an early morning thing. I want to do that again because why not? Okay. W5EXJ. Oh, is that John? Ah, that is John. Echo Mike 13. He's just right over here. John, are you in the chat today, or are you just seeing it? He, maybe he's just seeing me on, on FT8. John's one of the guys we go to Costa Rica with. Hey, Mike, see you in the chat. Thanks for uh, thanks for the QSO from the Azores, buddy. Does the VGC VRN7500 transmit over the internet? It does not natively. Okay, you, it has an app for programming that you can... Uh, thank you uh, for the QSO, uh, John W5EXJ, if you're in the chat. I don't know if you are or not. No, the the the, Vero, the VGC uh, radio does not transmit natively over the internet. It has an app for your smartphone where you can program it from the smartphone and key it up from the smartphone and talk and use your smartphone as like a Bluetooth microphone into the radio if it's sitting in your car and you're standing out in the parking lot you can key it up here and say you know cq or you know kc5 hwb you wouldn't call cq no repeater not supposed to anyway you call cq on 6.52 if you want to anyway you can use it that way but no natively it doesn't transmit over the internet but there is a guy who makes 
an all-star cable and box that will plug into the back of that radio, actually the front, and I think it plugs into the microphone port of that radio, that will enable it to be an all-star node over the internet. And I've got one of those boxes, and I can't get it to work, and he, I talked to him on the phone, it's actually been a couple months ago, and uh, he called me, he's like, okay, what's it doing? I explained it, he goes, just send it back to me. He goes, maybe something's f fouled up with it. So I'm sending in my radio and the cable back to him, and when I get it back and get it working, we're going to do another live stream about that, so... It's a cool radio. That VGC uh, N7500, it's a cool radio. But no, natively, it does not transmit over the internet. There you are, John. Thanks for being out there, bud. Yep, I saw EXJ. I was like, oh, that's John. <laughs> Thanks, man. Uh, John's one of the guys that goes to uh, Costa Rica with us when we go down there. We need to get another. Randy, hey, John, Randy called me like a week ago and was talking about the Flex down there and how to do firmware updates on it. And... um. I said, I said, yeah, I wasn't really able to go this year, I, I, and I guess he never put anything together, but um, I was like, we need to get down there next year, dude. So he's like, yeah, yeah, we need to do that. So put that in your, put that in your, in the back of your mind for for a, a Costa Rica D expedition sometime next year. <laughs> I don't know, whenever. Whiskey two Tango India is calling me, so I'm going back to you now. Spy sweeper. Hey, man, that's why we're here is to learn and teach. So don't worry about the questions. Uh, don't worry, I mean, seriously, don't worry about it. Can you do voice via FT8? No. FT8 is a digital mode that does keyboard to keyboard. Now, there's a, in fact, FT8 just does, it doesn't even do QSOs. It just does signal reports. I send you a signal. You send me a signal. We each say, okay, got your signal, got your signal, 73 by. That's it. In a nutshell. There's another program called JS8 Call that's built on top of the FT8 platform that will do keyboard to keyboard so I can type and message you hey bud how's it going you know it's 73 degrees out here today or something like that and I have had um Jordan is that his name it's been too long he's been the 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 creator of JS8 call has been on my show we did a live stream with him uh, a year and a half ago a couple years ago something like that and uh, it's probably, you know, I think he's released some new versions since then, so it's, it's probably to get him time to get him back on. But yeah, FT8 natively is just signal report to signal report, 73 goodbye, go on to the next contact. Hey, Peter, what's going on, buddy? Hey, Peter's the one who won that uh, Yezu FT710. How's that working out for you, man? Unfortunately, you will not get any Christmas from me. I don't know what that means. Any Christmas gifts? I wasn't expecting a Christmas gifts from you, uh, Nathan, but hey, good to know. <laughs> we still on for Fredericksburg next October. Yeah, we talked about that. We need to put that on the calendar so that I don't freaking forget about it. Um, but yeah, I remember, yeah, we talked about that, doing some POTA out there for actually um, Oktoberfest. And I think, um, I think, uh, I think my wife might be into that because there's a lot of wine wineries out there, and that's what she's she's into that, and and I am too. We we enjoy going to wine wineries together, and uh, there's a couple of distilleries down there for whiskey distilleries, maybe some vodka distilleries. I don't remember. It's a neat area. It's a neat area. All right, I'm just gonna call CQ. All right, let's see. How much power are you running? I'm running. I've got my I've got my radio set to 100 watts, but really it's it's pushing about 80 to 90 watts. Um so because of the tuner, because I have a off-center fed dipole that is not really resonant on the FT8 portion of the 10 meter band. So I've I have it tuned and it is I wish this stupid thing would quit popping up. And uh and and as a result, it's running about 80 85. Right now I'm transmitting it's running about 85 watts push about 85 watts. Uh, yeah, you can put it on the YouTuber's calendar. That's fine. I'm in Indiana. not seeing you on the screen. Okay. <laughs> okay. I just bought the FT5DR. Is it capable of this mode and keyboard to keyboard or just 
you just mentioned, no. FT5DR uh, is a FM and uh, Yezu System Fusion HT. This is considered an HF. Well, I shouldn't say that. You can do... You could do FT8 over 2 meters and 70 centimeters and 220 megahertz. Um, so you can certainly use it, but you need a you need like an all-mode radio to do that. Uh, an HT generally won't do it. There might be a way to like... There might be a way to like be, you know, hamify it, <laughs> if that's a thing. You could probably hack it and hamify it and do that, but natively it's 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 not, it wouldn't be that doable. Okay, Nathan, gotcha. Okay, Nathan, K, K1MAZ, okay, you were, you were talking to somebody else, gotcha, no problem. There are other stations on your transmit frequency, not from my screen, there are not. Uh, let me move that down so you guys can see that a little bit better. Here. Not on my screen, there are not, but I can change transmit frequency. My transmit frequency here is clear. So I can't hear those. Real hams do it QRP. No, that's like opposite of what is the truth. Yeah. So <laughs> life's too short for QRP, man. Hamification, hamified, ham harder, ham hardering. Yeah. You mentioned a pop up before. Is it one of the windows popping up to the front? Then, uh, no, 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 no. It's the stupid uh, news uh, news thing down at uh, on Windows 10 that has the news thing down to the sys tray on the on the right hand side. Every time you mouse over it, it pops up. Oh, do you want the news today? I was like, no, I don't want the news any day, let alone right while I'm trying to live stream. You dummy. So. Uh, let, let me go ahead and change, I'll go ahead and change transmit frequencies. I am not seeing a station on my transmit. Okay, something just popped up right underneath my receive frequency. Let me go ahead and change transmit frequencies just to, just to try that. Put that over there. There we go. Okay. I don't think my wife is watching, so I'm going to answer that question. K4YAG. My favorite cigar in the world releases around Thanksgiving every year. It's called an Arturo Fuente Añejo. Okay, Arturo Fuente Añejo. Añejo is Spanish for old or aged, something like that. Not viejo. Viejo is old. Añejo is like gracefully aged or, or um, you know, Añejo tequila. Surely you've heard of that. So I Spanish a little bit. I don't Spanish uh, 100%. But, um, so Arturo Fuente makes an Añejo cigar, and they release every year around Thanksgiving week, something like that, and for some reason, the run this year was really small. Most of the cigar shops around here that usually get 15, 20, 30 boxes got like two or four. Uh, I went by one cigar shop yesterday, one of the biggest cigar shops in the area, and, the, and he's like, well, we haven't even received them at all yet. Crap. Okay. So I got online, and I bought myself a box of those cigars. Don't tell my wife. But, uh, yeah. I've always wanted to buy a box, and I bought one this year because I couldn't find him anywhere else. But Arturo Fuente Añejo, if you go, if you have a cigar shop near you, <clears throat> go in there and ask them about that. And if they have one, if you're a cigar smoker, buy one. They're like 10 to 12 bucks. They're not expensive. Arturo Fuente makes another one called an Opus X that's anywhere from like $25 to $35. And, in my, and I've had one or two of those. In my opinion, the Añejo, for a third of the price, is a better smoke. So, um, yeah, if you're into cigars, go ask your local cigar shop for that. Buy one, smoke it, let me know what you think. Yeah, Gurkhas are great. W4JMD is calling back to me now. Okay. Right click that, select news and interest and turn it off. I don't think that works. Let me try let me try it. Right click that, select news and interest. No. Turn off. There it is. Oh. Dude, you I should have known that. Turn off. 
you just you just you just made my day with that. I've looked for that before, but I was looking in the settings of the Sistray settings or the taskbar settings, and I couldn't. I should have. I should have known to right click. See now. Now someone's on my transmit frequency. Let me move back up here to where I was. Uh, W4JMD. W4JMD. I got you, and that mine pop up and says you're still calling me. Oh boy, you got a plus eleven signal. Great signal out there, man. I don't know where you are. My queue so completed, but you're still sending me a signal report. So I wonder if you didn't get it on your end. I will change frequencies. How's that? Let's see. <laughs> Not all heroes were games. <laughs> Thanks, Carolyn. Which one were you? What was your call sign? I'm calling CQ on two, 2479, but not showing 2015 on your screen. Scott, what's your call sign, Scott? Scott Gibson, what's your call sign? I will look for you. I have stopped sending. Carolyn, what's your call sign? Y'all are one Y'all are one name in the chat and, and only see call signs in, in uh, WSJTX, so... How about does the Ranger 667 splatter on HFF, uh, spl splatter on HF? I have one CB days, just wondering about it. Um, W4JMD. Uh, I showed you completed on my screen, W4JMD. So if not, feel free to call back to me. Yeah, it now you stop transmitting, but like our QSO completed, and then it showed you transmit two more times on my screen. Maybe there was a delay. I don't know. I think we got it. Uh, Cloud Strife, uh, Ranger 667. You know what? I don't know. Those Rangers are usually bad about splatter, but I've not uh, I've not tried that model. I used to have a Ranger 2950 that I used on, on uh, 10 meters a little bit, and it was okay. But I never put it on a Spectrum Analyzer, so I don't know. Okay, 45, that's a good question. Uh, for those that don't do FT8, could you can explain the uh, plus or minus signal report? What is a good versus poor signal? So FT8, basic signal reports on FT8 basically go from negative 24 up to like positive, uh, I think it used to be positive 12, but I, I've seen them higher than that now. I'm not, I can't remember how high they go. A zero, if I'm getting a zero in FT8, that's basically a 5.9. So if you're coming in like a f plus 5 or plus 10, you're coming in like 5 or 10 over 5, 9. Uh, negative 24 is probably like a 2 by 2, but since FT8 is a low signal mode, um, it you can, still make, you can still make contacts with someone that is a negative 24, the lowest it goes. In fact, this Echo Alpha 1 Yankee Oscar station right there shows negative, well, negative 22 there. The problem is that if the band is up and down, especially like 10 meters, that they might be there one minute and gone the next if, the, or if their signal's that low. But it's totally possible to make a signal, make a, make a QSO with a signal that low. KM5 GN is coming back to me. There we go. Scott, WM... Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. Thanks for getting in the logbook, Scott. Got you in... The, yeah, I, I recognize that call sign. Appreciate it. I've reported a plus 36. See, it used to only go up to like plus 12 or 18, but I think in later versions... I've seen a plus 24. I think that's the biggest I've seen is plus 24. I've never seen a plus 36, but... I don't know. That's kind of neat. <laughs> I guess if you're standing next to the station, you're trying to call... You know, each of you standing there with a with a rubber duck on your 705, you could probably get a plus 36. There's that. Yeah, 24, I think it, 24 is the uh, KL7 TC, Bill. 
Um, I guess you're in. Um, uh, that's an Alaskan call sign. Am I? Am I? Am I correct? In Alaska. Sometimes I get Alaska and Hawaii confused, but KH seven would be Hawaii. So, I've disappeared in Oregon. Randy says, "Oh, okay. That's uh, I'm actually seeing more red on my waterfall at the top than I was a minute ago." Question: Where do you like your DB on FT eight? Where do you keep your power on WSJTX? Some say turn it down to the right of the messages. Power to the right. Of the messages. Oh, up here? Oh. I keep my power up all the way. Now, now, I think it probably depends on your radio. Uh, yeah, you guys can see that. So, um, so with a flex radio, which is what I'm using right now, there's this thing called DAX, Digital Audio Transfer, or cable, something like that. So I adjust my RX gain in the flex radio software. Okay. I think in Icom and Yezu, you do it somewhere in the menus. Or of course, you can only you can always turn the the knob up and down on some radios, but with the with a flex radio, it's I'm controlling that in the radio, um, not in now. Now that's that's receive. Well, that one's receive audio. This is mic stream. This is transmit stream at the top, mic stream in the in the middle, and uh, RX stream at the bottom. And I can have two RX streams because the radio has two slices. Oh, let me go back to you. KC one E O K. O E K. There we go. So I'm just controlling that with my flex radio mostly, the power output and the receive gain with my flex radio instead of messing with the WSJTX. This meter in the far left over here, can you guys see that? Let me turn myself off real quick. So this meter on the far left over here, that's transmitting right now when it comes back to, to receive. Uh, there, almost, 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 almost. There we go. So this meter on the far left over here is green. You can see in the bottom left corner of the screen is green. That If that turns red, then you're overdriving the receiver. So usually I turn it down in this RX stream in the Flex Radio software there. And I guess if I was overdriving something, I would turn it down in this part right here. But I've got the mic, I got the mic record gain at 32 out of 100, and I've got the transmit gain at 46 out of 100. So... In fact, I could probably turn the mic game down a little bit. It looks like it's kind of red there. Turn that down to 20. So, uh, it's really kind of more of a just <laughs> trial and error, uh, dink around with it until it works type thing. So, that's a uh, kind of story of my life. That's how I do most things. I just kind of plug it in, and if it blows up, then I go get another one. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But uh, I was just like, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, that seems to work. Just adjust it there. For power, I run my radio at 100%. I use the slider for power adjustments. Yeah, yeah. That's basically how I do it, too. Only 20% on the IC7300? Okay. Fairbanks, Alaska. Okay, Fairbanks, Alaska. Gotcha. Yeah, well, thank are you. Uh, are you hearing me? KL7TC? I assume not. I haven't seen any Alaskan stations on here today. There's Brazil. Let's see if we can go back to Brazil. Papa Uniform 3, Bravo Alpha Delta. Go away. Go away. Oh, no, you're at work. Okay, Bill. All right. Well, that's too bad. I would have liked... I saw Alaska on 10 meters yesterday. I went back. I tried... I, I don't remember what the call sign was, but it was a... Um, I want to say it was an Alpha Lima prefix. And on the far right over there of the of the of of this window, the left... The uh, band activity window, it said it was an Alaska station, an AL station. I'm like, oh, cool. So I tried to call back back to him, and he was not hearing me. Hmm. Brazil's hearing me right now. There we 
There we go. Papa Uniform 3, bad. Awesome. I wonder if this uh, Canary Islands guy can hear me now. He couldn't hear me a minute ago. My, Mike, if you're running a time sync software which I am, you don't have to switch your computer to UTC. Now, the computer you guys are seeing in the background right now is my ham radio computer, and it is the main computer I use for running FT8. I have it set to UTC, but on my laptop, I don't have it set to UTC, and I take it to Parks on the Air or sometimes to um, Field Day, and it's just at regular standard time, but I have a time sync program running in the background, and that's what... That was what fixes your time sync. Oh, look at the look at that. He's coming back to me. He's hearing me. His signal's stronger than it was before. He says I'm a negative seven on him. He's only a negative fifteen on me. So he's hearing me louder than I'm hearing him. Nice. This is the station in Canary Islands. Mm-mm. I'm going to foobard that. All right. 73. Thank you. Echo Alpha 8 Delta Sierra. <clears throat> Let's see. That's good. All right. I moved my uh, chat window over here. It's easier to see. Do you enjoy FT8 Digital or the regular modulated QSOs more? I assume you mean like sideband? Um, honestly, I enjoy sideband probably more than anything. Um, I think that sideband is the hardest mode to, to, not the hardest mode to use, the hardest mode to make a contact with because it requires the most um, power in your signal or the most propagation of a signal, perhaps is a better way to say it. Um, FT8 is really easy for uh, low noise or high noise, rather, and low signals. Uh, CW is is great for low signals. That's why CW works so well on... on um, um, low, uh, QRP. I mean, you can do QRP uh, FT8 and QRP CW and make a lot of contacts. You do QRP sideband, you can make contacts, but they're fewer and farther between. So I think sideband is the most challenging. You got to have the correct band conditions, correct antenna, correct everything. And I think it's a little bit more challenging to make <clears throat> sideband contacts. And, that, and there's that factor to it that I enjoy. But at the same time, I just like talking to people usually. So, but what I have done a lot of times is, um, um, if I go to a park and like, for instance, a great example is, uh, is, uh, Montesano State Park when we go to Huntsville every year, we'll sit down and activate the park. And when I just get tired of calling CQ, cause we're there for like four or five days. So, and when I just get tired of calling CQ, I plug the computer up and start calling FT, uh, CQ POTO on FT8. Those contacts count in my POTA log as well. So I just get tired of talking on the radio or sitting there because I can sit there and call CQ POTA and walk over and do something else and come back and check on it and make sure that QSO is done, start the next one, that kind of thing. Mike, Michael Hamilton, I don't know if you're a troll or if you're just messing around, 
which is which is totally fine if you are. But if you check the waterfall at the top of the screen, you can clearly see that FT8 does not suck today, or uh, 10 meters does not suck today. It's not going to be as good as 20 meters, at least usually not. But yeah, I just worked about 20 or 25 stations since I fired up this uh, connection about half an hour before I went live. I worked you on 2017 uh, single sideband 30 meter FT8. Uh, your call sign's familiar, Bill. Okay. Into JHR. Thank you. Thank you for the contact. I'll just enable that again. Boom. <clears throat> Michael, you're welcome to ask questions, man. But you started your last comment with "Wow, dot 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 ten meters sucks today." Period. That's not a question. Okay, so if you want to know, if you uh, if you have questions, feel free. I'm new to all of this. Just asking a question. That's all. Damn. Well, word your question like a question next time instead of saying "Wow, that sucks today." Why would you do that? It sounds like you're trolling. <clears throat> so. 10 meters is a band that can be very up and down, to answer your question. It's a band that can be very up and down. Um, this is certainly not the best I've ever seen it. But it is, there's there's activity out there. There's been a lot of times, you know, a, a year, year or two ago, you'd fire up 10 meters and there would be nothing on the waterfall at all. Like nothing. You see all the colors? See this at the uh, above my head right there. Where's my finger? It's disappeared. Above, at the very top of the screen, there's that blue band across the screen. And all those yellow and red and orange colors coming down that blue band, those are signals on the band right now. That's what that is. That's called a waterfall. Because it comes, because it moves downward like a waterfall does. So that's just what we call it about waterfall. So <clears throat> um, so the waterfall is showing blue and red and, and, and yellow. Uh, I'm sorry, not blue. Uh, yellow, orange, and red signals right now, right now, which means there's signals out there in the world to be heard and communicated with so that's what that is you can cl tell clearly that it is not dead right now but if you don't know what you're looking at then you know feel free to ask questions that's certainly fine <clears throat> bit of a noob question but can a band be regionally bad yes absolutely especially 10 meters 10 meters can be very regionally good or bad so yeah, up to it. The closer you, I, my my experience has been, the closer the equator you are, the better ten meters is. And um, yeah, if those got somebody from a somebody from Washington earlier was saying that ten meters was dead up there, and but I'm I'm hearing stations uh, all over the place. So Do you mind sharing your settings for colors under settings? No, I don't care. Um, let me finish this QSO and I'll do that. Oh, now I'm starting to get people call me. W2IBZ, thank you. How about this? There you go. <laughs> he just put a... So that Michael Hamilton idiot, he just put a square... full of swear word comment in there and it hit it from me, so I just hit him from the channel. He's obviously either trolling or he's just rude and doesn't understand how to communicate with other people. I don't know. Okay, so settings for color waterfall. Somebody asked about that. Let's... um. Let's go here, um, settings, let's see if, you guys see that? Yeah, y'all can see that. Okay, so colors. Here's what I do. There's something you have to change over here. 
I, I clicked this show DXCC grid and work before status. Okay. So that box is usually unchecked by default. So I checked that box and I think that has something to do with the colors. But then I come over here to colors and I make sure everything's checked. Basically, I don't do this logbook of the world, new call on band. Sometimes I'll have that checked. I don't have that checked right now. And then uh, new ITU zone and new ITU zone on band. I have those four unchecked. Logbook of the world user unchecked. New call on band unchecked. New ITU zone and zone on band unchecked. Everything else is checked. That's how my colors set up. So what I call that is I call that going green with FT8. Because these all of these stations that you see on the far left over here right now are stations I have not worked for. Like this Ireland dude. Uh, Echo India 2 Kilo Charlie. Let me see if I can get him. That purple means that is a new DX entity in that on that continent. Okay. The blue, the light blue that you see, means I've worked someone in that grid before, but I haven't worked that station. And then when the when the when they change green, like Whiskey Alpha 2 IBZ right here, that means I've worked that actual call sign before. So I like I like I was like, hey, if it's all lit up. Sometimes I'll fire up 20 meters FT8, and uh, and everybody's green. Uh, so I was like, okay, you're already in my logbook. You know, that's cool. But uh, but other times it's like this. Like, I haven't worked any of these stations that are up here right now. I've worked their grids. I've worked their continents. I might have worked their states. But uh, states aren't really tracked in WSJTX. They, tra they track continent, uh, so Alaska, well, Alaska and Hawaii are considered a, a DX entity. DXC is what they 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 um they track DX entities. Um, Alaska, Hawaii, Canada, or North America, South America, Africa, Asia, Europe, Australia, and then they get a little bit more granular after you make one contact with that. It starts to turn colors and whatnot. So I just I like to do it like that. I think it's kind of fun. You ever done a video on how to properly use WSJTX? Sort of, yes, sort of. I've done a video on how to set up JTX with certain radios. Um, there's um, there's a lot to WSJTX that I don't know how to do, and they don't do a lot of other modes just besides just FT8 also. So not not real not really. I don't. If I understand your question correctly, not really. <laughs> uh, that's a good one. K4YEJ. FT8 10 meters is just now starting to roll up in Northeast Washington. Okay, cool. Good, good, good. Maybe as the day gets... Well, of course, you guys are two hours behind me, so I, I, I assume it's around 11 a.m., almost 11 a.m. where you are right now. Um, it came alive around 10 or 10.30 this morning here. Got my tech license a couple months ago, but haven't been able to make any contacts. I program local repeaters and call frequencies into my radio. Is there a program like this where I can see activity? Not for FM and repeaters that I'm aware of. Maybe uh, for you can see activities on like digital modes, such as D, uh, DMR and Yezu System Fusion, and probably D Star. I'm not sure about that, but. Uh, yeah, no, not not really the same sort of thing for FM or repeaters, no. Echo India uh okay. Whiskey Quebec one whiskey. Okay, so this uh this Irish station is not is not hearing me. So let's go to Whiskey Quebec one whiskey. There we go. Wow, that's almost been an hour. Holy cow. Working FT eight's fun. Just got Brazil from Texas. I got Brazil a minute ago. Yeah, that's was pretty cool. Typically, you you. My experience has been it's easier to get South America on ten meters than it is to get like Northern United States or Canada. VH propagation Mac for a new tech. Yeah, which one do you suggest? There's a bunch of those out there. I don't really use anything like that, but, you know. 
that wouldn't he was asking about repeaters though that wouldn't vh propagation map wouldn't really matter for repeaters so much local repeaters so much so here's a here's a uh, aprs.minolink.org and i'm in texas so here's texas here's the vhf propagation right now of course, you can go to PSK Reporter and look up 2 meters as well, or 70 centimeters or something. You can see that. But this is going to be more applicable to, like, single sideband or CW contacts. Or or maybe FT8 if you're doing 2 meter FT8. That's going to be more applicable there. So, Minnow Link, that's the one I just, yeah. Yep, that's the one I just pulled up, so. Well, guys, I got to go run some errands, so I wanted to go, and I, I wasn't sure if I'd even go a whole hour today, but this has been fun. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. W uh, Quebec uh, one Quebec. Uh, I'm sorry, Whiskey Quebec one Quebec made uh, contact with you. Thank you for the cue. So, so thanks for hanging out with me today, guys. Um, we'll have some videos tomorrow. Going back to the hunting lease tomorrow. Got a couple of videos to make out there. That should be really fun. And then on. Sunday, we're going to be live streaming about a brand new Morse code practice device that Frank's dad is actually designed and building, and his or his stepfather. <sighs> He's going to, yeah, I forget which one it is. I think it's his stepfather. Yeah, anyway, Frank will tell you. <laughs> I'm going to misquote that again. So, um, yeah, anyway, he Frank's, Frank's family member has designed and built this thing called Morse Monkey. Which, we're, which he's going to be selling as a kit, and we're going to demo it on the stream on Sunday, so that should be a really fun time. Uh, Frank's going to do a build video on his channel, and I'm going to demo it on a live stream on, uh, on my channel. So, um, What is the two-letter code for Vermont? VT? That's the state code for it. Anyway, hey guys, 73, thanks for hanging out today, and uh, hope to see you in the chats for the uh, premieres tomorrow and for uh, the live stream on Sunday. Y'all have a good uh, afternoon. Go out there and work some... Uh, FT8 on 10 meters seems like it's still rolling, so go out there and try it.